start with Will Wheaton, um, poker player, actor, and actually blogger extraordinaire. Um, how have you made the crossover from being a successful actor to a, a poker player and a well-renowned uh, internet writer? I've always wanted to be a writer. I've been a creative person my entire life. And when I was younger, that creative energy was directed toward acting. And then when I hit my mid-20s, uh, I was less interested in all of the stuff you have to go through to be a successful working actor, and much more rewarded by uh, all of the stuff that goes into being a writer. So I put all my creative energy there. It's kind of drawing from the same well, uh, with just a different sort of process. And I started playing poker when I was in high school, and then started playing very seriously and playing tournament style stuff around 2000, 2001. And you ever amazed at how many different people read your blog or how uh, how far across the world you're known and everything like yeah, that? Yeah, every time someone comes up to me and says, I read your blog or I read this on your blog or hey, tell your son I said congratulations or like anything like that, it's a little weird. Um, I don't really look at my stats because I don't care about that sort of thing, but every now and then if there's like an advertising thing going on or something like that, I have to look at it. And uh, sometimes the numbers are, they freak me out. And are you mo more well known now from your blog or from your acting career or poker career or what? Um, you know, people kind of come up to me about my writing, uh, whether it's one of my books or uh, if someone reads my blog or they read some of the freelance blog writing I do, like the TV Squad or something like that. Um, people will come up and talk to me about like Stand By Me if it's running a lot on cable or, or uh, you know, or like if they if they happen to be doing like season two or season three of Next Generation on Spike TV or something like that. Uh, but but you know, most of these days I'm pretty anonymous, uh, which I really like. I can make a good living. I can support my family. I'm sending my kid to college in fall, and uh, I don't have to deal with any of the uh, like associated attention and stuff that kind of comes along with being a like you know successful kind of like celebrity person. Are you ever surprised by some of your fans? I mean, I guess you're popular in Star Trek. Uh... Have any of them weirded you out or asked you questions that you didn't know how to handle or anything no, you like know, that? I, I'm a huge nerd. My, my first book uh, is actually called Just a Geek. And I'm a computer geek, and I'm a programming geek, and I'm an astronomy geek, and I'm a science geek, and I love Star Trek, and Battlestar Galactica, and Doctor Who, and Farscape, and like, you know, all that stuff. I really, really like it. I love 1970s post-apocalyptic disaster sci-fi films like The Omega Man, you know? Um, so when people come up to talk to me about that stuff, we're kind of speaking the same language. Uh, I've often joked that the main difference between me and a guy at a Star Trek convention is that I got paid to wear the space suit, and that's it. <laughs> And uh, you were in Stand By Me at a very young age, so obviously you had fame at a young age. How were you able to deal with all the pressure and fame that came along with you know, being a movie star so young? When I was really young, um, I kind of got hip to the fact that, flame, that, that fame is fleeting and uh, fame is kind of bullshit and like it's stuff that doesn't matter. I'll give you a very good example. Like, I guess Paris Hilton is here and people are fawning all over her. And, like, she just annoys me, you know? Like everything that woman represents, it just annoys me. And like the fact that like she's famous and the doctor who saved my friend's life isn't, you know, kind of tells you how important fame is. So when I was a kid, I kind of figured that out, that there were people when I would go on auditions that wanted to be actors, and there were people who wanted to be movie stars. And the people who wanted to be movie stars were idiots. And the people who wanted to be actors were wonderful, really creative people. And I wanted to be like them. I didn't want to be, you know, all that big famous stuff. But I guess I'm lucky because I'm not. <laughs> and it's such a competitive field. What do you think separated you from everyone else that was trying to be an actor or movie star and things like that? Uh, for young kids, um, acting is all about instincts and not trying to act, just being natural and having good directors that can kind of help shape those instincts and sort of point you in the right direction and, and keep you going that way and like prevent you from flying off the rails. And uh, I was very, very lucky to work with directors like Rob Reiner when I was young uh, because he really helped me establish like a reliance on my instincts and uh, like prevented any of us from really looking bad in that movie. And what do you think like um, the biggest thing that the Hollywood life or movie life has taught you in your own personal life? There are things which are really important and there's things that are important to other people. And the things that are really important are like taking care of my family and uh, making sure that my kids get to school on time and uh, like occasionally having a date with my wife. Those are things that are really important to me. And you know, we have a limited time on this earth and those of us that are given the real gift of being able to do something cool with our time, being able to make like some kind of 
impact on the world with our time. If we don't seize that, then our time is completely wasted. So I try to figure out what's important and what's not important and just sort of do the right thing. How do you keep your kids from feeling kind of that celebrity LA Hollywood bug? Uh, my father's famous. My, uh, my wife and I live in the suburbs and we live in a real quiet neighborhood and uh, I do not take my kids to premieres. You know, I don't get invited to that shit anymore anyway. You know, I'm like, I'm really like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm cool with that. But I don't, I don't get invited to that stuff anymore, so it doesn't matter. Um, I'm really able to sort of keep my kids insulated from that because they're not around that world. Once, many years ago, uh, I did a movie for Disney called Flubber. And they flew me and my family to uh, Walt Disney World in Florida and gave us a guide and put us up. And they paid all the expenses and they like, did everything for us, you know. And my wife and I still had our kids like wait in line, you know. And we didn't go to the front of things and we didn't like, you know, take things and that sort of thing because we didn't want them to think they're entitled to that show. We wanted them to know this is really lucky and this is really awesome. It's like we won a contest, you know, like let's enjoy it, but don't lose perspective. And uh, you said we have a limited time on Earth. You're from Star Trek The Next Generation. Is that true, or have you found anything out that the rest of us don't know yet? Um, well, Dick Cheney's doing everything he can to blow up the world right now. So if we can manage to survive the next, like, two and a half or three years, um, we have a much better chance of, of the, the Star Trek reality actually, you know, sort of showing. Well, thanks a lot, Will. We really appreciate it.